as she was saying, it's very important for us to, to stay as orderly as possible and be the best that we can be because if we stray off on the wrong path, then we're going to be in big trouble. That's because we're doing it's because we're doing the work and because it didn't he was unable to finish the job with us the first time, you know. And and um, so we're we have the choice of becoming martyrs and being destroyed, or we have the choice of doing the work and hopefully helping one. I don't know how you feel one other person. If I can keep one 13 year old out of a mental hospital because he really is seeing spirits, then I've done my job. Because I have I have penance to pay for not blaming my son, and that's my um, driving force, I guess you'd say. Because I don't want to see this happen to another child anytime, any place. Yes. Do you believe that? It, um, I've noticed a lot in like the paranormal shows when they come in. A lot of the fans already have children from like eight grade four to around eight, maybe even going up to 12. And I've noticed that that seems to be a really big um, area that, that tends to show up on TV. And I was wondering, does the children have anything because of the, maybe because they believe in, uh, they have such a vivid imagination that it tends to attract? Gifted children can bring things into a home. Um, simply because they play and they do use their imagination. I was very gifted. I have an imaginary friend as a child. And I have seen with my grandchildren that they have brought spirits in by playing with them. It's not a conscious thing they're doing. I don't believe that's always the case. There are many gifted children that never bring anything in their home. And there are children that, that do see spirits, the babies. As they grow, they, they learn to not recognize the spirit world and they, do, uh, they separate from it, if you will, and there becomes a chasm. And that actually protects them. And these gifted children keep that, that little thread into the, into the unknown, and they can pull things through. It happens more often than we would like to see it. But I don't think that that is the law, necessarily. I think that there are more families with small children that don't have paranormal activity than the other. Did that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you, you agree with that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Any uh, other questions? Yes. Any other questions? I, 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 I'm, I'm sitting here with a K2 meter. Uh, what are you finding? <laughs> huh? What are you finding? I'm dousing your questions and answers. And? Well, so, yeah, we're on track. Um, when you said that you had, um, Spirits that were in your periphery. I got a yes. <laughs> I started taking photographs. Yeah. I'm a paranormal investigator at heart, you know. You will find very few pictures of me around me that do not have orbs. Uh, actually, uh, they were they're over here. But I've got a possible app close to the back door over here. I won't know until I put it on the video. I saw you moving through the room. I knew what you were doing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's yeah. Deborah. I know Deborah. <laughs> if, if certain profane acts, such as um, necrophilia, bestiality, mm -hmm. tend to open a portal through which demons can come through, do you think that certain blessed acts, such as charity, prayer, Absolutely. Open a portal through which angels. Nobody ever talks about angels coming through. No, I've never heard anybody say, "Oh, I thought." Well, okay, I've heard some people say, "Yeah, I saw an angel." Well, but actually, when they were talking about the rock, I said that the opposite is true with religious relics. Um, you take a crucifix. I have a rosary in my pocket right now that you probably love to touch. The energy is very strong. I pray on it routinely. Um, you can bring in angels. You can bring in um, holy men and women saints, if you will. I, I'm Roman Catholic. I do call them the saints. As well as the Cherokee, I call them my ancestors. And I use all of that. Um, I don't believe that one contradicts the other because Cherokee believes in one God and I do as well. Um, and they do believe in the spirit world. And I do. Very, I feel the energy of trees. I feel the energy of rocks. So I know that they do exist. And uh, But I do believe very much in the, the 
the light bringing in the light, and the dark brings in the dark. And what I mean by that is good brings positive good into your life, and negative brings negativity to your life. If you want to be successful, you cannot be negative in this world. You want to be successful, you have to have a positive attitude, you have to believe in yourself and the world around you. You can. You have to have that kind of attitude to succeed in life. You will never find somebody saying, whoa, me, at the top of the CEO uh, bank or any, any company. It just does not happen. You have to carry an attitude of positive. If you want positive in your life, if you want negative, you can carry a negative attitude, and that's what you're going to get. Do you agree with that? Amen. I totally agree with it. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. I want to ask you both. Um, uh, most of the folks in here know that I do certain things through my psychic medium gifts. One of those things is crossing over. Have you ever considered allowing someone to take that negative energy that impacts your life, uh, if, whether it be um, human, uh, uh, whatever kind of haunting it is that's going on in the spirit? How do you feel about the possibility of someone taking that and attempting to cross that spirit or those spirits over and away from you and releasing them forever. Go for it. If you can do it, do it. Be happy to try. Just be very careful and protect yourself because what I have around me, you don't have to let. I have never experienced the evil that I experienced when I was in that home. I don't ever want to face it again. If I ever hear its voice, you're likely to see me run. It is absolute pure evil in its purest form. It has no desire. It has no compassion. It does not like humans. And for me, um, I've actually done a battle with these forces. I was 13 years old in 1979. And after seeing my mother picked up by an invisible force and thrown across her bedroom, smashing into a table and really getting hurt something in me snapped and i grabbed a bible and some holy water and i called out these demonic entities in the name of jesus christ as i started doing that the house was shaking like an earthquake things were falling off the walls things were flying around i had five other adults five adults with me i was 13. They weren't saying anything. They were terrified. But I had some type of external power that came through me that day. I was not scared. And I challenged these things, and I called them out in the name of Jesus Christ, and they eventually manifested a few feet in front of me. And there were four entities, and I will never, ever forget that. I saw them very clearly as the adults did for several seconds and they appeared in greenish beams of light and then they just dissipated like that and when they did the chaotic activity and the earthquake like things that were happening stopped but that was my first battle and encounter with something like that but it wasn't the last in 1988 Someone very close to me became possessed. And I have no doubt that it was due to me. This force, this entity, was trying to get to me through my loved one. And this person was a female who had changed drastically. Her voice had changed to a deep masculine voice. She suddenly had superhuman strength. I'm a pretty strong guy. I was a very powerful guy back then. This small woman put her hand around my throat and I felt like I was being crushed and it took every ounce of strength I had 
to get her one hand off of my throat. I had to call 911 at one point. It took nine EMTs and police officers to hold her down. And a voice came out of her. And the voice first said to me, for a man who has such faith in your God, you surely don't know the Bible. And at that time, I didn't. I didn't know any scriptures. So this demon went on to mock me, quoting scripture after scripture after scripture. This person did not know the scriptures either. And at one point, the voice said to me, why don't you just give up and join us? And I said, who are you? And it said a name. But I can tell you this, as sure as I'm sitting here, God was with me again because as these things were happening, and this possession lasted for three weeks and one day, and it ended in an exorcism, that priest is now in an institution. I can truly tell you this, an external force was with me again. I believe that force was God. Had God not been with me, Lord knows what would have happened. When it first started happening, I felt like the blood was just leaving my head. I couldn't believe this was happening. I had started by me seeing a dark form, which I had seen previously in the Herondale house, the Glenburnie house. And I saw this dark form in the bedroom door. And I recall saying to myself, as I saw it, I said, oh, no. And I started praying. And it wasn't long after that. My loved one was sitting here with me like this. We were watching TV. She was wide awake. Suddenly she was asleep like that. She went from being like this to a deep sleep. And I thought that was very odd. I even tried to wake her and she wouldn't wake up. Then I saw this dark form in the doorway. Then I heard a sound that I never want to hear again, and I hope none of you will ever hear it in your life. It sounded like a rattlesnake coming from inside of her. Never heard anything like this. And from there, she sat up very robotic, zombie-like. And the first thing she did was sat up and looked over and rip my cross, my crucifix, off my neck. There's a lot more I could say about it, and I will say, I'll tell the entire story in my next book, but it's very disturbing. It did happen. I wish it didn't happen. But this is part of my mission, my calling, is to warn people that these things are very real, and they are out to destroy us. So it's very careful, or we have to be very careful, not to let these things into our lives. And we can take authority over it. And we must. And for anyone who begins to have these experiences, God forbid, or a family member, I would say get help right away. Do not let this go. This, there's nothing more serious. This could cause death. So... That is my warning, and this is part of my message. And I will continue to carry this on until the last breath of my body. So please, I pray to God that it never happens to any of you. But please, just be very careful. Any other questions? I would literally feel the 